Hello everyone, I hope you're doing wonderfully well. For today's valued viewer question, we've got from our good friend Falco Bugol, and he's got this link here. So I'm just gonna click on this link, stand by. What we're gonna be looking at today is an event with the USN. They accidentally crashed two F-18s together, two legacy F-18s in a training accident, and they smashed each other up pretty good. Uh, kind of similar to the Israeli F-15 where it lost a wing at the wing route. And we're going to read about it and we're going to see if we can reenact it and see if, how it works in DCS. Now we're not going to go through all of the text because there's a lot, but I will issue this link so you guys can come back and look at it. Approaching the merge, Lieutenant Commander Anderson and I were the two bandits killed, leaving Commander Worthington's jet for the F-14s to tangle with. At the merge, I was on the left, Lieutenant Commander Anderson was in the middle and Lieutenant Commander Worthington was on the right. I saw the two F-14s, they were coming uphill and we started going downhill towards them. I did one aileron roll and was in the middle of the second row, merging with the F-14s when Greg Anderson and I collided. I felt a sharp shudder in the airplane and the next thing I felt, the airplane was rolling left with the nose pointing down about eight degrees. Somebody else was saying, knock it off, knock it off. I found out later that the nose of his airplane ripped through my left wing and clipped off half of the vertical stabilizer. His nose cone was sheared off, see picture up here. So that was the guy kind of behind that did the damage to the other guy and his whole nose had come off. His radar would have landed in someone's garden or whatever. Sheared off along with his canopy. Oh, I didn't know his canopy had come off. Wow. Drop tank and he had damage to one of his motors. Everybody on the radio was saying, knock it off, knock it off. Then somebody said, I think we had a mid-air. It was quiet for a few moments until Worthington called me and said, have you got it? Have you got it? As in, have you got control? I said, yeah, I have got it. As I regained control of the airplane, I applied right stick right rudder and started pulling the power back a little and the nose came up. I got it flying straight and level with full right stick deflection and a little bit of right rudder. On the radio, Anderson called me and asked if I had control. I checked with him and he said he was fine, but you could hear a lot of background noise on the radio from the wind. <laughs> Uh, so we probably won't be able to knock the canopy off, but we can eject the canopy in the chase plane. We were both all right physically. We were at 20,000 feet, so make a note of that. And airspeed was 350 to 400, make a note of that. And uh, this is the guy who was in front. And you can see he's lost, lost half of his wing at the midpoint. His, what is that, port wing and his port vertical stabilizer. Otherwise, his jet appears to be in good condition. At that point, we we're all glad. I mean, think how lucky you are just to, you know, have his nose come like that. Uh, you know, the, the merge speed would have been ridiculous. It would have just atomized everything it came in contact with. At that point, we're all glad to be alive and making sure that phys we were physically fine. Then we started sorting out exactly what was wrong with our airplanes. After the impact, the DDDDD tones, warning and caution tones related to all the systems were going off as a result of the wing being sheared off and the hydraulic lines being cut, etc. I looked out of the wing and saw it was chopped off. I began focusing my attention on how I was going to get back home. I looked down to the ocean and thought if I had to go down into the ocean it was going to be cold and I turned immediately and headed towards the coastline. If the plane didn't stay together I wanted to be close to the coastline if I had to jump out of the airplane. Sort of makes sense. This event all took place in April and even though Though the air outside was warm, the water temperature was still very cold. Anderson later found out that its airspeed and altitude indicator was not working because the probes had been ripped off the front of the aeroplane. He didn't know how fast or how high he was. It'd be interesting to see if that's modelled with us. And he wanted to make sure he was going fast enough to keep the aeroplane flying. He had enough visual to know where he was going, but he wasn't sure about his speed. I wanted to get somewhere that had a long runway plus a cable because he wants to land fast, obviously, because he's got no lift. He needs to go fast. So I turned to Oceana, and Anderson came to the same conclusion. I began talking to Oceana, at least the radios work, approach, and I told them that I had an emergency and I needed an arrested landing. At this point, I'm 15,000 feet, and I began to slow the gradual descent to about 10,000 feet and started slowing the aeroplane down. This was part of the checklist for any kind of damaged plane, a controllability check. I wanted to see how I was going to be able to control the plane at landing speed. As I got down to about 195 knots, which for a normal Hornet is fine, the plane, plane began to roll to the left. 200 knots was as slow as I could get it and still control it. I got the VFC-12 ready room on the radio and asked them to get McDonnell Douglas representative on the radio. I told a guy on the duty desk that I had a mid-air and started reading him the cautions on my display screen. I was reading off high failure, flaps, caution, etc. 
He was sitting at the desk writing on one of those yellow sticky pads. He quickly filled up three sticky pads with warnings and cautions. As I continued to read for, uh, from the aeroplane, he was trying to write them all down and started saying, hang on, hang on, you're going too fast. And I said to him, you think you have problems? Bowman joined on my right side. We're about 10 miles out from Oceana, 3,000 feet. I lowered the landing gear, and during the transition of the landing gear, the aircraft became very difficult to control. Interesting. I pushed the power up and was jockeying right and left with the controls to control the aircraft back on a straight and level heading, approaching the field. I was flying with full right stick, eek, as I headed north up the coast. I had to make a left turn of 120 degrees to line myself up with the runway. I eased out some of the right stick and let the plane bank and got lined up with the runway on a three mile final approach. I told the tower I was three wiles out and was coming in on two three left for arrested landing. The LSO came up on the radio and told me he had a visual on me and that my glide slope looked good. I flew straight into the runway at 200 knots, which was his minimum touchdown, and rolled into the gear and took a trap successfully. So they used the arrest hook, which we don't have, unfortunately, but we'll have to do the best we can. Fire trucks were right on the spot as soon as I stopped. I shut down the motors and saved up the seat, the fuel... That was streaming out of the left wing was now gushing out onto the runway which the firefighters quickly dealt with I quickly unstrapped got out of the aircraft jumped down onto the runway and looked at my jet and i couldn't believe how much of my wing was actually gone my immediate attention turned to anderson and how he was doing we spotted him lining up for a landing on three to his radar home radar centerline tank and his tire canopy after the windscreen was all gone with wires <laughs> flapping out of the nose beating against the side of the jet how cool fortunately he was strapped in tight and lost only his watch when the canopy came off interesting anderson landed safely we picked him up we approached each other shook hands expressed our relief that both of us were all right we got in the ambulance and were checked by the flight surgeons and debriefs so i've just taken a few snippets there you can um, go and read that if you want to uh, go and read it let's go and see how we do welcome back valued viewers we are in virginia now as you can see i'm in lead hornet rc's in rear hornet he's going to try and use his nose cone to smash my port wing and then my port fin off and we have no idea what's going to happen so let's just get roughly information sorted i'm pausing yeah. hey well done i'll see <laughs> yeah you did it just right <laughs> right let's try and trim this out oh okay have damage to my nose but hang on i'm really struggling with this okay try and relocate me if you can i'll see where are I'm you i'm really strong ah, full rudder I'm really struggling. Okay, I'm on a full right rudder and full right stick, and I'm oh, I just. Can't even find you on the map because you're dead. Ah, uh, look for a smoke, and I'm pretty much going down as well. Okay, I don't. I'm not going to be able to hold it still enough for you to do the tail fin as well. There's no chance. Can you... I can try and land. Oh. Yeah. I'm going to put some flares out now. I didn't think it would be this hard. As you can see, I've got full right stick and full right rudder, and I'm yawing like a bitch, and it's the only way I can do this. The first thing they do is say, I think he said he loses altitude and he did his controllability check. So he got low down, flares out, and um, got slow. So let's see how I slow see. we can go next. In the story, the guy got down to 200 knots. I don't think we'll be able to do 200 knots, but we'll see. Okay, I'm looking it's for Oceana. Black smoke bomb. Yeah, it is problematic. I'm not going to lie, RC. Let's see how the fuel is doing. There is fuel. There is fuel in the wing, but it's not coming out, so that's not quite modelled right. Okay, I'm down to 270 and I'm still sort of controllable. It's good that they've modelled it this well, actually. It's pretty much marrying up exactly what the guy said. So far. I'm now on the verge. Okay. I can no longer control my... I'm full stick. Oh. You know what? I should have done my controllability test at Angels 20. Not at Angels 2. I think she was constantly dropping... Mm. Okay, okay, she loses control at 250. And I've lost full control. Shit, I'm departing. No, I'm back. Oh, I just started. No, I'm departing. There's nothing I can do here. I can't. There's nothing I can. Woman's a pain in the butt. God damn it. <laughs> All right, we've got to do that again somehow. So what I found there, valid viewers, is that below the real uh, plane could do about 200. This, about 250, is about the slowest I could go. Yeah, well done, I'll see. Perfect. Look at you being all good. Oh, no, I've lost my hell bomb. Damn it. No. Right, I've got to do it again. Prepare to respawn. Come on, baby. Tell me it worked. Tell me it worked. Yes! We got it. Got it, I'll see. We got it. Yeah. I've actually got a bit more wing this time. Uh, but... 
for about three quarters. Let's see how this goes. Do you want me to hit your vertical? Nah, I can't hold it still enough for you to yeah. do it. It's pointless. So I'm going in with three quarters of wing, to two off. thirds. Yeah. But I can't hold it still, so there's, there's no way you can do it. I see. Uh, this is actually just like flying a normal plane, to be honest. I'm just flying it normally. So this should be okay. Yeah, all that's come off is the tip, that's why. All that's come off is the tip. Let's go and try and land it anyway. I would say, even with just the tip off, it. Uh, Not that happy, is it? It's giving you some issues. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put my, try and put my gear right now. Yeah, Fab's gonna stay. Right, power on, power on, power on, power on. She's failing. She is failing. I'm on full right stick. Did you put your gear down? Uh, I tried to. Did they go down? Uh, yep. I would put them back up if you're having problems. I got it. I got it. Oh, you're already. You're I got already it. I got it. I got it stabilized. It's all about the speed. As soon as you get to 250, she'll just. So I could just do an F-15 landing. Hook coming down. Ready to catch the thing. Don't want to get on angle. I'm just gonna land it like a 15. Cut. She's got the landing gear for this. She's got the landing gear for this. Rudder. Wow. Hammer on the brakes! Prepare for J turn, I'll see. Prepare for J turn. I'd usually be landing about this speed. <laughs> Hammering that rudder. Hello, I'll see. I'm gonna make it. <laughs> I, whoops. Butterfingers, I'll see. <laughs> it's alright. I'm good. He's good. That's just how RC lands, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> okay, landed successfully with whatever that is, some damaged gear and three quarters of a wing. We've got to go and do it again, but get the full wing on, RC. Um, we'll get the half, the whole half wing on. It's just how it is. Oops, butterfingers. <laughs> ah, damn it. No, I love one gone. Okay, so out. Oh, hello, RC. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> you got it. Thank you very much. Full right rudder. Full right stick. Let's go in and land. Emergency. Emergency. Right. right Lessons. Right uh, sort of. So not below 250. That is full right rudder and full right stick, and I've got jack shit control basically. Uh, oh, doesn't like air brake. That's not like air brake. I don't think I'm going to be able to do this. Is there any way I can transfer some weight over to the right side to weigh this thing down? I don't no. think so. Uh, Flaps are just going to make the problem worse. Uh, the boys think mm -hmm. left throttle down, left throttle down. Explain to me why that helps, guys. Okay. It might very well help, I just need to explain why. Left throttle going down. Wouldn't that roll me the wrong way, left throttle down? Right throttle down. Yeah, I think right throttle down as well. You know what really doesn't help, RC? Can I tell you what really doesn't help? Well, at least the RWR works, guys. What? Oh, being okay. being locked. Oh, I'm losing it. I'm losing it. I've lost it. Departed. Nothing I can do. Ah! No, I'm getting it back. How did I do that? How did I do that? No. Damn, that's so hard. Ah! Okay, that's another... Yeah, it's a bit too much again. No, again. Still says 600. Okay, that's it. That's oh, damn it. Well, maybe we can't get half off. Well, I've already landed it like that. There you go. Yeah. I think that's probably the best we're going to do by the looks of it. The annoying thing is we can't get the half wing like he did. We get a third or two thirds. Well, I'll go and try and land RC, but I doubt you'll be able to. Full right rudder. Full right aileron. I'll come and see you in. But I don't think we can get quite what they showed on the on the accident report. Right, um, you're going to want to go right and get to the nearest base. <laughs> Thanks, I got that. Right is a little hard right now. No, it's not. Ooh. Oh, gosh. Oh. Oh, dear. That's... I don't think so. <laughs> that's, uh... I'll help you out with that. Oh, I'm out of ammo. Right. 
I am dizzy. Oh, that's funny. Look at him go down, guys. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> okay, valued viewers. Didn't quite work out. Um, it looks like you can either take one third of the wing off or two thirds of the wing off. We've had a, you know, I've only showed a couple of goes there, but we've done about 15 or something now. With one third of the wing off, you can land at about 250 or whatever I landed at. It's about only one third of the wing remaining. It's impossible because as soon as you blow 300, really, you lose control and you can't get it back. It probably doesn't help that you have to stamp full right rudder just to keep it straight and level. That's probably putting it into the uh, departure, but there's nothing else you can do. So annoyingly, we can't quite get how he had it, which is just enough so that you can get down to 200s and land. But that's the way it goes. Anything you want to add to that, I'll see. I hope that's useful and see you later.